It's been a true privilege to be the leader of the council over the last 12 months. And as we move towards Christmas and the new year, it's right that we should reflect on the many achievements which we, together as a borough, as have achieved over the last year. Of course, this year has been difficult. We've had to develop how we've lived with the COVID-19 virus. And as we moved into the next phase of dealing with COVID-19, we also had to look to how we rebuilt the borough to be more green, to be more safe, and to be more fair for all of our residents. Throughout the pandemic this year, we have paid out over £800,000 to people struggling financially as a result of COVID. We've worked hard to protect local jobs and businesses by paying out over £79 million in grants to businesses since COVID began. And we've worked closely with our partners at the NHS to make sure COVID vaccines have been available and accessible to everyone eligible at the right time. And so far, 138,085 people in Richmond upon Thames have been double vaccinated. The pandemic has pushed our spending and reduced our income. And despite desperately needing more funding from central government, we have still been able to deliver on our commitments to the borough. Last month, the climate emergency was brought to the fore of the global stage through the COP26 Global Summit. And locally, we're working day in, day out to make this a greener borough. We have planted the highest number of trees in a single planting season for over 10 years, with more than 500 new trees across the borough. We've continued our mission to change how people travel in the borough. We've installed 125 new cycle parking spaces, seen the borough's first protected cycle lane on Q Roads triple in use, and then made 13 school streets permanent, encouraging people to use clean and sustainable modes of transport. We're participating in the Brief London trial and have installed 45 air quality sensors to gain a previously unseen level of air pollution detail to inform future work. We've had almost 250 residents sign up to the Solar Together London programme to install solar panels on their homes. We're rolling out 580 new communal food waste collection points, serving up to 17,000 flats across the borough. We've reduced how often we cut the highway verges to enhance biodiversity and reduce our carbon footprint. And finally, we hosted the Richmond Climate Week alongside COP26 with our partners at Habitats and Heritage and delivered a week-long programme of practical activities, talks and educational events with over 1,000 local people participating. We've promised to make Richmond a fairer borough for all and these are just some of the ways in which we've achieved this over the last 12 months. We've offered free school meal vouchers to over 3,600 children during the school holidays. We've offered the fuel grants to 818 households to help residents through colder weather and ensure nobody is faced with fuel poverty. We've supported 1,331 people to live independently in their own homes and given 67 people care technology to help them with independence. We've agreed an ambitious new housing and homeless strategy. We've seen residents raise over £100,000 for local youth mental health charities through the Richmond upon Thames Voluntary Fund. We've agreed updates to the SEND Futures Plan aimed at improving services for over 4,000 children and young people with special educational needs and disabilities who either live or who are educated in the borough. We've provided £361,000 to help fund the delivery of affordable housing in Hampton Wick and Heathfield wards. And we've been awarded £850,000 to bring affordable housing to Teddington and to Twickenham Riverside subject to planning permission. And we've also worked to make Richmond a safer borough and a borough for everyone. We've become a white ribbon accredited organisation and appointed our first white ribbon champion, Councillor Ben Kosa, to drive forward the borough's work to tackle violence against women and girls. We've installed a 20 mile an hour speed limit on 97% of all of our roads. And we've held 10 community conversations with residents on the future of our high streets and town centres. The pandemic has made our local area more important to us than ever before. And we should all be proud of the way in which we have come together and faced the challenges collectively which COVID has brought. We must remember that we're not out of the woods by any means. So if we want to ensure that we all have a safe Christmas 
and a healthy new year, it's well worth following the rules with which we have become so familiar. Washing our hands wherever possible, maintaining a social distance of at least two metres, and if you're meeting people indoors, as you are likely to be over the next few weeks, make sure there is a good supply of fresh air and that the room is well ventilated. And do please remember, if you're going out and about in public spaces, to wear face coverings when you're travelling on public transport, and if you are in shops, supermarkets, and similarly enclosed public spaces. These small acts can do a great deal to avoid additional pressure being placed on the NHS, which is already struggling at this very difficult time. However you're celebrating and wherever you're celebrating, please do have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.